Good morning, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you my breakdown of the 13-game main slate on Monday, August 5th. Kind of ironic that I've got uh, Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace pictures here behind me, seeing as they pretty much hate each other going forward if you watch the NASCAR race or any of the clips yesterday. But uh, either way, some of our family's favorite drivers, so I'm going to keep them up on the wall. Moving on, um, like I said, we've got a 13-game main slate tonight. And we're going to go over some of my pitching options that I like, as well as some of the hitting options. But before we get into that, if you're not a RotoPros member, you're going to want to get over to rotopros.com. Um, right now, we've got a free trial going on. We've got three days. Just click on that right here. You're going to click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner. Um, for a weekly membership, it's $5 a week. You get a three day trial with that. Monthly, $15 a month, seven day trial, $150 a year with a seven, seven day trial there as well. And if you use promo code MLB um, from watching this video, you're going to get 50% off your first purchase after your free trial is out. So that can be some, some excellent savings. So you're down to $250 a week uh, for your first week, $750 a month for your first month, or $75 a year. That's your That would be your biggest savings with that promo code. So get over, see what we're all about here at RotorPros.com. Um, our biggest thing is our community chat where we have one-on-one -on -one coaching um, going through anything from lineup construction to research to player selection to uh, game selection to strategy GPP um, versus cash games we're really there to educate our customers um, to become better fantasy players in almost all sports um, we do cover NHL MLB NASCAR PGA uh, NFL coming up here right away we got a lot of prep going on for that we got a lot of shows coming up for that as well so stay tuned for that like and subscribe um, turn your notifications on, you'll get notifications whenever we have a new show that comes live. With that, um, we're going to jump in and like I said, we're going to talk about uh, starting pitchers first and then we will jump over and talk about some stacks that I like and then uh, I'm just starting out with a couple core stacks because I like to go a little bit deeper into pitching. We don't know the lineups for these teams uh, so that's something we dig into a little bit more as we get closer to lock in our community chat. So. Um, Let's jump right in here. Just flip over to sharing the screen for the cheat sheet for tonight. And if anyone is new, definitely get over to our uh, our YouTube channel, and you will find a MLB kind of like an educational series of videos that I did. Uh, the first one is the cheat sheet overview. It's going to kind of give you um, a basic understanding of the cheat sheet, some of the stats that are in there, how I use it for my research. Definitely a great video if you're new to RotoPros, new to my sheets in general. And then I've got stats on uh, pitching stats, a video on batting stats, and pretty much what I'm looking at is the stats, um, both simple stats that you probably heard of, plus the advanced stats that maybe you haven't, and why I use them, and why they're on the sheet. Um, so definitely check those out. And then I also did one on contest slash game selection, difference between GPP, uh, multi-entering, and how I go about building my cores. Um, just, I touch on that just a little bit, and then just mostly the difference between cash games and GPP and, and which contest to select on a night in and night out basis um, to keep you most successful. So let's just jump right into pitching here. So we've got a nice selection of pitchers at the top tonight on this 13-game main slate. For me, it starts with Lucas Giolito. Um, he's the most expensive on DraftKings at 11000 He's got an excellent price and stands out even more. He's the third most expensive on FanDuel at just 9800 It's a minus 160 road favorite. Um, like I said, he's much more appealing on FanDuel under 10 k Bounced back after getting blown up by the Twins two starts ago. Um, he held the Mets to three hits and one earned run in his last start while striking out nine. For the season, he has a very impressive 339 ERA. Um, been solid all season. He's made some changes. He dropped that two-seam fastball, uh, throwing a little bit more change-ups this year. So he's really turned it around because we used to target against him last year. And he's got a sub-4 XFIP to back it up. Um, anything sub-4 in the XFIP range kind of is what I'm looking for. Anything lower than three and a half XFIP is in that elite territory. And there's not a whole lot of pitchers there. He's also got a 30% K rate career high for him, which is really good to see. 14% swinging strike rate. So he's missing a lot of bats there as well. Um, the walks can sometimes be a problem. You see a lot of these guys in this top tier do have some walks, but they do got the high K rate. That's definitely something they kind of correlate together a lot of times um, with high strikeout pitchers. So the other thing I like is the matchup against the Tigers. Uh, 
They've been slightly better as of late. We'll just scroll over here and we will look at the matchup real quick. Slightly better lately, 93 WRC plus over the last seven days and only a 21% K rate. But we take that even further. They've been one of the worst teams in baseball lately. 63 WRC plus last two weeks, 25% K rate versus right-handed pitching. They got a 73% or 73 WRC plus, sorry, 26% K rate. So the matchup definitely lines up um, for Giolito tonight against the Tigers. That's why he would be number one. He's going to be my cash pitcher on FanDuel. I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him on both sites tonight. If you want to go GPP, a um, couple pivots that I like in the top tier right around the same price. And we've got Charlie Morton, minus 243 favorite, going up against Toronto. As we know for the season, he's been really good. He's got a 30% yeah, K rate, 13% swinging strike rate, an excellent, uh, not even excellent, elite 3.33 uh, XFIP, um, which really backs up that 280 ERA that he's put together this season. Um, he's got the lowest K rate of all the guys in the top tier. He produces almost 50% ground balls, which is excellent, and only gives up 30% fly balls. So there's a lot to like about Morton, and you're probably wondering why um, against the Blue Jays you are, you know, you have him as a GPP option. While I talked about Giolito, he's got the clear number one matchup tonight. Uh, Morton's a much bigger favorite and a much better pitching part. Toronto has been a little bit better, so there's a little bit of risk there. Um, as you can see, Toronto over the last seven days has got a 142 WRC+. Plus. 119 over the last 14 days, so they've been a lot better. They start bringing up these kids. They're playing very well together at the top of the lineup. So there's just a little bit of risk there. I prefer Giolito going up against Detroit, who's been bad the last 14, 7, um, pretty much the whole season against righties. The matchup's just a little bit better for me, and only a $300 price difference. I'm going to side with Giolito there. Um, and then, again, I'll side with Giolito on FanDuel at $300 less. Luis Castillo also stands out. He's a minus 230 favorite um, going up against the Angels. He's got a 367 XFIP. Excellent there. Um, number one ERA on the slate uh, of the top tier here at 263. 28% K rate, so he's got a lot of upside. Um, I think that K rate has got a chance to even climb even higher if you start looking at that swinging strike rate. 16.1% absolutely elite, kind of up in that Max Scherzer type range when it comes to swinging strike rates. He can get into trouble with walks at times, um, which can be a little bit troubling going up against the Angels. Um, they do a very patient lineup. Um, they don't strike out a lot. That's the biggest thing is they strike out under 20% overall versus righties, 17% versus lefties. The thing I do like here is they have been struggling a bit lately. Like over the last seven days, 70 WRC plus, 24% K rate, 86 WRC plus, 22% carry over the last 14 days. So the last couple weeks they've been worse on a lot of their offensive numbers than they have been for the season. Um, we're just not getting the discount with Castillo with the risk that he's not going to get those, uh, you know, if he goes six innings only gets five, six Ks, that's not really enough for that price tag. We're, we're going to need seven or eight strikeouts um, for him to probably match Morton and Giolito. So GPP only for me just because it is uh, obviously a worse park in Cincinnati. Um, He's been pretty good at home this season, but just the risk with L.A. and they're not striking out a whole bunch. Um, I definitely lean Morton and Giolito a little bit more than Castillo tonight, but I'm not ruling out Castillo whatsoever with his, uh, with his upside. Another pitcher that stands out, um, if we're going to dip into the sub-10K range here early on for me, is Kyle Hendricks, minus 145 favorite. A little bit higher total at 9.5 going up against Oakland. Um, Mid-range park, good for suppressing home runs more than runs, as you can see here. And this is uh, all my park factors are a three-year running average of runs um, and home runs in each park. Um, he's been excellent all season. He's got a 307 ERA and a 425 XFIP. So it looks like there is a little bit of regression there. It's about 1.2 runs higher on the XFIP he's running right now. So he's running a little bit hot on the ERA. But he's been even better lately. Um, just four total earned runs and four starts since the All-Star break. And averaging 6.3 innings per start. So he's given you a ton of safety um, You know, when it comes to cash games. He's not going to give you that big-time upside. If we scroll over, I think he's kind of in that 22. Yeah, 21.6% K rate range. 10.5% swing and strike rate. So like league average. But he doesn't walk anyone. He goes deep into games. Um, he, he really limits the hard contact. As you can see, 32% hard contact, only 85.5 exit velocity, average exit velocity. 
Um, start looking at his X Wolver is only 10 points higher than his Wolver. Um, the X Slug is only about 10 points higher than his slugging percentage. So there's not a lot of regression, I think, in those advanced stats. Although um, we do see that that X Whip is about 1.2 runs higher um, than his ERA. So I'm not too concerned there. Um, Oakland, I usually like to target a little bit more against lefties. Um, they're, they have some consistent bats. Chapman's been struggling a bit lately. Uh, Chris Davis is down in the order. He's been very cheap on the sites. But Oakland is, you know, league average versus right-handed pitching this season. Like I said, they're a lot better versus lefties. Last seven days, 113 WRC+, plus, 23.4% K rate over the last two weeks. So they have started to heat up, as you can tell, over the last seven days. But over the last two weeks... We've got uh, 77 WRC plus a low 144 ISO and 25% K rate. So with his, with K Hendricks' consistency going deep into the games, facing a, you know, I would say league average offense um, against right-handed pitching, um, looking at their trends over the last 7 and 14 days as well, he's definitely an option if you want to go cheap, a little bit cheaper with your uh, cash game. Um, locked tonight. I think he's going to be lower on just because of these three top pitchers. I think people are going to tend to gravitate to one of those guys and then go down into the value range um, on DraftKings for their SP2. And then for FanDuel, I think it's pretty much going to see 60% cash uh, ownership um, somewhere in that range for Giolito at, at sub, sub 10k price range in an elite matchup. So Hendricks could definitely be overlooked. Um, but like I, I talked about, a safety is a little bit greater than his upside, but he's sub 10K, going to be low on, gets a decent matchup, um, and goes deep into games. So especially on FanDuel, he's going to get you that quality start bonus. So I definitely like going that route. Um, not too much into Mike Miner going against Cleveland. Uh, Mike Miner hasn't been as good lately. Cleveland's been a lot better lately. Um, we got Mike Soroka um, going up against one of the best, I would say, top three offenses in baseball in Minnesota, so I'm not going to be going there. Um, Tanaka hasn't been that great. I think we can probably consider him just because it's Baltimore, um, a GPP option. Other than that, I'm not really looking at anyone in this mid-range. Velasquez maybe as a GPP. I don't like the matchup versus him um, lately. Um, but uh, um, overall, you know, the K percentage is there, 27% K rate, 12% swing and strike rate, but... He gives up a lot of fly balls, not a ton of ground balls. You can see 90 mile an hour exit velocity, almost 44% hard contact. Don't love the matchup. Arizona has been better against lefties, but uh, um, overall the matchup just isn't there for me to risk it with some of the other options that I talked about. Going down in the value range, there's two pitchers that I'll be looking at uh, the most right now. Uh, Tony Gonsolin is one of them. The Dodgers. He made a start, his major league debut back in June. Kind of got roughed up a little bit. I think he gave up four earned runs. He's a minus 170 home favorite, getting his second start. Um, since being recalled, they sent him back down to the minors to figure out some stuff, uh, work on some things. Since he's returned, he made one relief appearance in Colorado late in the game. He only allowed three hits over four innings and only gave up one earned run. So that was really positive for him. Uh, moving forward. And if you're worried about a pitch count at all, just consider that Dustin May made his Major League debut for the Dodgers uh, a few nights ago, and he went 97 pitches. So I'm not too concerned here. Um, I love the park. They're minus 170 favorite. Gonsolin has shown a ton of K upside throughout the minors, so I think he can get there as well when it comes in terms of strikeouts. Um, so far, I mean, it's only about seven innings that he's pitched so far, but 63% ground balls as well. So he hasn't got his strikeouts there yet, but he's producing a ton of ground balls. And he faces a St. Louis team who has struggled against right-handed pitching. 88 WRC plus, 23% K rate. Over the last seven days, 74 WRC plus, 28% K rate, and still just below league average over the last 14 days there as well. And above average uh, K rate at 24.4%. So I think we can consider him as a cheap SP2 tonight. Um, you're only looking for about 14 to 15 points on DraftKings. Um, on FanDuel, I think he makes a good GPP play if you want to absolutely load up on the bats. We'll talk about some of those good bats here moving forward. Um, also, in that same game as Giolito, I don't mind Spencer Turnbull. He hasn't been great. Um, it's not really totally about his talent. They're 143 dogs, so it would be more of a GPP pivot at, SP t at starting pitcher 2 over Gonsolin. Um, he's averaged just over 5 innings pitch per game. 
And while he hasn't been great or shown a ton of upside, only a 20% K rate, he's been solid um, for a dumpster fire team with a 365 ERA, while the XFIP is just over a run higher, 472. The X and while that run, you know, 472 XFIP, the ex expected stats in terms of X WOBA, X slug, average exit velocity don't show a whole lot of regression in that uh, sense. The number one reason we're considering them, the matchup. Chicago have been one of the worst teams in baseball by far in the second half. 262 WOBA, 61 WRC+, 28% K rate since the All-Star break. 246 WOBA, 51 WRC+, 29% K rate over the last 14 days. And 240, it gets even worse, 240 WOBA, 48 WRC+, 107 ISO, and almost a 32% K rate over the last seven days. So Turnbull has definitely got to be in the uh, starting pitcher to value pitcher consideration tonight just because of the matchup alone. I wouldn't even uh, fault you for running like a Giolito Turnbull together in one lineup. All right, that covers the pitchers that I like uh, so far tonight. I will be adding some more to the member sheet here throughout the day as I go through a few more pitchers, see some of these lineups and how they shake up, so things might change. So stay tuned for that. You can grab that members-only cheat sheet in the Roto Pro Slack chat. Um, and like I said, to be a member, get over to rotopros.com, sign up, uh, get your free trial, and you get your members only cheat sheet. So now we're going to jump across and we're going to go into uh, a couple stacks that I like. Early on in the day, there really isn't uh, a whole lot that I'm looking at, just a couple of teams that really stand out. It's going to come down to the lineups, like I said, and start working with lineup construction to see who fits. But first of all, I'm looking at that Boston game, Boston, Kansas City, because we've got... Mike Montgomery um, <clears throat> going up against Rick Purcello. Both pitchers have been bad. Uh, Red Sox, the top implied runs tonight, nearly seven runs. Um, starts with the matchup, like I said, Montgomery. He's given up four plus earned runs in two of his last three starts since joining the rotation, and with just five Ks in that time and 46% hard contact across those three starts. So it hasn't been great for him. Uh, whopping 33% line drive rate as well in those three games um, in comparison. Uh, league average is kind of right around that 20% rate when we're talking about line drive percentage. And in terms of um, line drive rates, that's the most correlated to fantasy points just because line drives have a better chance of falling in for hits versus fly balls or even ground balls in that sense. So seeing the 13% higher than league average over the last three starts in terms of line drives. That's not even, not even talking about home runs or fly ball rate. So that's kind of a red flag for me. 25.8% um, home run to fly ball rate for the season. So he also offers a ton of home run upside there. And then on the other side, Kansas City, uh, probably a little bit lower owned, but provide a ton of value. They've been cold, as you can see, like red across the board here. They've been cold lately. Um, they have been slightly better against right-hand pitching, although it's below average. But they're facing Rick Purcell, and he's just been a disaster lately. Um, Four-plus earned runs in five of his last six starts. That's a 9.35 ERA. And while the XFIP isn't as bad as that, it's still terrible at 5.7. So um, he's given up 10 home runs in those seven starts. That's an 18.5% home run to fly ball rate. Um, the Royal, he only striking out about six and a half per nine. So, yeah, I mean, he doesn't even have that K upside to get guys out. So when he gets in trouble and is giving up hits and walks, they're scoring runs and bunches on him. So that's the reason why I'm really looking at Kansas City, um, even though they have been cold lately because it's, it's an excellent hitter's part. That's a great matchup. Um, some of the hitters I don't talk about a lot, but got some pretty good BVP against Purcello there as well. Um, so Kansas City is a team I'll definitely look at. And if you want to, you know, in GPPs, Definitely go with some game stacks here with Boston and Kansas City bats um, with the pitchers that you like. Kind of gives you those expensive bats with some cheap bats. Um, if the game goes to like 8-7, um, game, you know, similar to that. We've seen a lot of those games this year in high scoring. Um, you, you know, you're really going to crush GPP if you get your, your pitchers right as well. Two on DraftKings, one on FanDuel. So the other stack that stands out to me right now is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um don't like the park, obviously. It's really bottom three in run suppression over the last three years. But they're going up against Michael Waka. And he, um, the Dodgers are one of eight teams of the five-plus earned runs tonight. But they are my second favorite team behind Boston if we're talking, you know, just raw points. 
They've been much better against right-handed pitching. They've got a 345 Woba, 116 WRC Plus, and 219 ISO versus righties. Uh, versus lefties, they've only been about league average. 324 Woba, 102 WRC Plus, 185 ISO. Um, so definitely like them against righties. He talked about the matchup against Waka. He's gone back and forth between the pen and the rotation, but he's given up four plus earned runs in six of his 14 starts this season. The 23% home run to fly ball rate. So again, that upside is most definitely there for the, definitely there for him. And he's also got a slate high 1.61 WHIP. So he's walking guys. Um, he's given up hits. He's given up teams a ton of opportunities, and you can't be doing that to these elite offenses like the Dodgers. Um, 22% home run to fly ball rate, like I talked about. And he's also got reverse splits with a 405 Woba. He's been bad against lefties too, but he's given up a 405 Woba and 596 slugging percentage to righties. So don't rule out the righties, uh, Justin Turner especially tonight. We've got a lot of options um, there as well. So um, some of the top Dodgers, I guess, if you're looking at the top of the lineup, you know, we're looking at lefties such as uh, Peterson. Muncy's coming off an excellent night. Like I said, Turner's the righty that I'm looking at at the top of the lineup. Um, cash games. He's fairly priced. He's only 3K on FanDuel right now. He got Bellinger if you can get him in there. He's very expensive, but he's a gold play for me in almost any matchup. Then we've got Corey Seager. Um, still cheap. Like the Dodgers are fairly cheap. Like outside of Cody Bellinger, who's 4,800 on FanDuel, they're all in that 3K to th mid 3K range. So they're not a tough team to stack at all, even if you're, you know, getting Giolito in your lineup. AJ Pollock. Um, 3,400, so Alex Verdugo, um, they've got a lot of bats up and down the lineup. So they're, they're a team similar to the Yankees that we talk about a lot, that you don't just have to stack one to four, two to five. You can go deeper in the lineup. You can go, uh, like if you want to get Bellinger, you go four, five, six, seven. Gives you a lot of uh, value there with Bellinger to, to be able to get him in your lineup. So there's a lot of ways you can go with the Dodgers. Same story with Boston um, as well. I talked about them. Betts, uh, Devers for GPP hasn't been as good against lefties, obviously. But you got your usual sus suspects and Betts, Bogarts, and Martinez at the top. You got some, um, you got some value with Sam Travis at first base. Ben Intendi is a GPP play, lefty lefty matchup, but he's been pretty good against lefties. You got a catcher there in Christian Vasquez, um, who I would consider, your, you know, up there with the top catchers on DraftKings tonight. Michael Chavis is a GPP play there as well, so they're kind of up and down the lineup. Um, there as well. So when it comes to Kansas City, and I'm just kind of reviewing, going through the other sheet, going in through individual plays to kind of give you a sense of which um, which players I'm really looking at. Got an error on the screen. There we go. The Royals um, going up against Purcello. Obviously, you got Whit Merrifield at the top of the lineup. Alex Gordon. Um, those two would be, you know, if you're going cash, if you want to go the cheap route with cash, I think pairing those two together. Makes a decent um, decent way to go in cash. The one two in the lineup for GPP, I would extend that to Hunter Dozier, Jorge Soler, um, even Ryan O'Hearn. I like Chesler Cuthbert in there as well. So there's some nice value plays um, going down to the five six spot in the Kansas City lineup as well. So that covers um, some of the. Um, top stacks I like. We went over pitchers and some of the pitchers I like. If you got any questions, leave them in the video below. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the video. You can also hit me up in the Roto Pros members chat or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine or on the Roto Pros um, Twitter account at Roto Pros. Thanks for watching. Um, more videos coming up. Let's go ahead, make some green screens. Let's hammer the slate tonight. Good luck, everyone.